Hello, let me demonstrate how to use generative AI for reviewing articles which uh, are meant for uh, peer review publishing. And we're going to also use uh, Chaos, uh, a journal that uh, has uh, a Creative Commons 4.0 license and kind of an innovative way of publishing. So let's go ahead and take a look at a specific article, Teaching Patterns in Technological Curricula. Now, this article might be useful because in the academic community, the content will be uh, fairly uh, uh, easy to, to grasp and it's relevant. So this particular article uh, was published on the uh, Chaos uh, system and uh, people are invited to uh, review it. Now, we're going to uh, take a look at uh, uh, the journal first. So, uh, this new journal that seeks to reduce bias in scientific publishing. Uh, this is a, an interesting approach to publishing scientific research. The goal is to make the reviews public and to allow um, kind of collaboration of uh, reviewers. So, an interesting approach and uh, an interesting uh, journal. The journal itself has a publishing policy and the policy is uh, fairly standard when it comes to what the expectations are of authors, uh, but it's non-standard in terms of how it deals with open access and the fact that uh, immediately upon posting the article, uh, the Creative Commons license is applied and uh, DOI is also uh, assigned. Uh, so there are some features of uh, standard journals and yet there are some innovative features of making uh, the collaboration on the article public. Now specifically, I want to uh, drop down to the uh, process of review. So you can be invited to review an article and I was invited to review this particular uh, article but you can also spontaneously navigate to the article. So it's, in, it's publicly um, posted under a very uh, flexible license so we can openly uh, talk about this article. Now the reviewers are going to post stars as kind of a quantitative um, marker but there's also room for comments uh, for quality feedback. Now when it comes to the evaluation criteria, I think this is an interesting statement in the policy because as we will see, the reality of the published material somewhat differs from the policy and there's really uh, not a way to uh, police uh, these articles that are kind of an ongoing review process. So when it comes to the quality of the car articles, the expectation is that it will be based on accurate, reproducible data obtained from rigorous, rigorous study designs. Um, it talks about uh, research hypothesis, uh, appropriate, clear, specific, testable, um, and uh, falsifiable. So uh, think about um, the goal set here. It's pretty standard to most journal articles. Now. Looking at impact, articles should be interesting and significant, deal with important issues, topics of interest for a scientific community. Uh, there's a novelty also as uh, an expectations, articles that are creative, original, yet that advance understanding or bring other innovations to their field. So with this, uh, we see that the expectation for scientific research is high. But now when we look at the actual article we're going to review, Teaching Patterns in Technological Curricula, uh, right now the rating is uh, about 3.4 stars with 9 reviewers. At first glance at this article, uh, we have an abstract, but in terms of uh, structure for a journal article, we are missing a literature review, we're missing some specific sections uh, that would be kind of expected in a scientific article. Uh, what we see here is a set of um, 
not even definitions, but uh, explanations or comments about uh, 11 uh, patterns. Now, patterns or methods in uh, teaching. We have uh, distance teaching with a picture that's included in the kind of a blog style. So this at first sight lacks the formatting for a scientific uh, article. Uh, we have a reference for uh, the picture. This is supposed to be representation of distance education. Uh, now, what, what I see here as a, as a reader is two people in person collaborating with a digital device. Um, perhaps this is not the definition of, of distance education, but it could be mother and daughter uh, working uh, together with a teacher uh, online. Uh, we have uh, flipped teaching with some explanation of uh, the process and the roles. And uh, here another picture, uh, kind of a um, cartoonish explanation. Uh, doesn't uh, really il illustrate what a flipped uh, teaching would, or flipped classroom would be about. A blended teaching, a uh, fairly short description here, hybrid teaching as well. And so just moving on, uh, we have at the end a reference section. Now there are three references that are actually not referenced in MLA or APA um, format with this link being actually a 404 link. So uh, something that expired at uh, some point. Okay, so in general, uh, first look at this would be, it's really kind of a blog entry and maybe description or a list of um, teaching methods that include technology or are in the technology field. So we can read over reviews that are already here uh, and we see uh, throughout the reviews kind of a, I would say two ways of looking at it. One is critical and one is kind of a rubber stamp. So here the critical view uh, article is useful for early career teaching faculty who are trying to understand the different formats of teaching. However, it would be beneficial to see more critical approach to view um, each format and look at actual teaching strategies. So this is a really um, kind of a kind and and uh, and and, um, and uh, constructive uh, review. Dear author, the subject of growing interest in research and practice in the pedagogical field, I think it's important to put the author's ideas forward to expand the text by holding a discussion need to articulate concepts, uh, elucidate them with practical examples. Uh, in this way, I will have theoretical support and subsidize the discussions. All right, so some information that maybe the article is, is lacking, multiple views, some contrasting ideas. Uh, the next review, uh, it is great to find applied research working on the links between technologies and new learning and teaching methods. The work presented represents this type of approach and meets requirements of an article of its kind. Uh, reading the policy we just reviewed to forecast, I probably would disagree with this approach. Um, again, five stars um, for this uh, view. Out of all these views, I would say um, Mohammed Hussini posted the most extensive review, and uh, I, I want to briefly navigate to the full review. Uh, here, uh, Mohammed mentions uh, that uh, the teaching patterns for technological curricula, um, it's a commendable effort, right? And so to shed some light. Uh, but it specifically mentions uh, that the description in the teaching patterns um, needs to be clear, concise definitions for each pattern at the beginning of the article. So the definitions are great, but this should be just the start of an article and likely include references to uh, peer review research where some of these uh, practices were either described or, or have some uh, evidence. And so the second point, empirical evidence uh, lacking, that, that, that's a great um, statement uh, and uh, really uh, needs uh, kind of evidence that these types of um, methods are used. While you include visual representations for some patterns, consider adding diagrams. Great idea. Uh, consider incorporating a section where you compare and contrast these patterns. Excellent idea. Expand the pedagogical impl implications of these teaching patterns. 
how they impact student learning outcomes, engagement, and retention, provide insights into educational benefits. Also, uh, agree with that. Conclude your article suggesting potential areas of future research. So this is fairly common for scientific articles to say, now that we've established with this data, we have these findings, here's the discussion, this is the future research, uh, recognizing that between the lips review, which is kind of establishing the state of the art of knowledge um, in current articles, and then our uh, article being the contribution to new knowledge, then stating where we need to go next. So that's a fairly common section in an article. Ensure that your citations and references follow consistent uh, and recognized academic style guide. So we, we saw that there are three references at the end. They are not actually referenced in line in the article uh, to which section of the article they, they um, apply. Typically APA would be uh, the um, standard, although MLA, depending on the subject matter, might be the more accepted one. Collaborate with other researchers. Very nice um, uh, review. Now, there are three stars here. And so, you know, what, what does that really mean? Uh, is this um, a recommended article? And again, back in the policy, some of these different definitions are stated. So what we'll do now is we'll take this article and we're going to uh, um, put it into the Quiver AI. So Quiver AI happens to be an open source project. You can run it online um, where it's available, or you can download it and run it locally. Now, that's a very important uh, option in to, uh, for anyone who is working with articles that maybe you want to keep private, preprints and so forth. Maybe you're trying to see what the reviewers, uh, what AI tools in the hands of reviewers will uh, show. So this is a nice way of uh, running the project locally. It does uh, integrate with a database system called uh, Superbase. And so this is used for uh, some data tracking. Um, and so you would create your own project there to, to use it. It will run out of Docker, so kind of a local uh, server. All right, so the Quiver system uh, happens to allow you to uh, upload multiple types of documents and then have a conversation with them. It is open source. It is like a second brain that read your research and is ready to, to give you more information. And so in this uh, example, I've uploaded the uh, document. And now my first question is, what is this paper about? And the response from uh, Quiver, the papers explain the patterns of teaching, um, there are 11 teaching patterns, and they are listed here. The, pattern, the patterns differ in their use of technology, um, student-teacher roles, synchrony and location. The aim of the paper is to help educators select appropriate approaches when designing and delivering technological curriculums. So that's pretty accurate explanation. And let's say if I had uh, multiple documents uploaded, I can then chat uh, and ask questions about specific um, uh, documents. So should this paper be published in a journal? Now that's a tough question to ask AI, uh, mainly because we did not submit the policy for the journal. So let's see it. So as an AI assistant, I don't have personal uh, opinions. However, I can provide some guidance on whether this paper should be published in a journal. So this is a good point. If we uploaded the policy for the journal, we might expect uh, some criticism on the quality of the article or, or references and so forth. Uh, this recommendation here says it, uh, that the, you know, what, what the article uh, aims at explaining. Based on this information, it seems that the paper contributes to the field of education by providing comprehensive overview of teaching patterns in technological curricula. Also offers practical insights for educators in selecting appropriate approaches for designing and delivering technological curriculums. Now, if I wanted to rubber stamp this paper, I could copy and paste this explanation, but it really would prove that I did not make myself familiar with the policy for the journal. Um, I would say that this is uh, uh, kind of a best guess that this AI was able to provide. So critically evaluating that, uh, we would say that that's, that's not the best uh, recommendation. But notice this question, which I think is one of the most difficult questions to, to ask 
uh, what are the gaps in this paper? And, and the reason why is because we are uh, kind of talking about uh, uh, survivorship bias. We're talking about seeing certain expressions and now we're asking what is missing? What is um, What are the gaps in the paper? Now, typically there will be a limitation section that might um, describe it in, in a scientific uh, article. So notice here, the paper does not mention any uh, specific gaps or limitation in its analysis. So that's a great finding, right? So right away, uh, we don't have limitations which should be listed. Uh, but it says one potential gap could be the lack of empirical evidence. Great finding, and we saw a human review earlier that also picked up on that. Um, so case studies to support the effectiveness of teaching pattern to address this gap. Future research could include empirical studies that uh, investigate the outcomes and impact of different teaching patterns on student learning engagement. So here is a nice follow-up already to what was requested in another review, and that is, what is the future research that could be added? Additionally, the paper does not discuss the potential challenges or barriers that educators may face when implementing these teaching patterns. It would be beneficial to address these challenges and provide recommendations or strategies to overcome them. Great suggestion. Then, furthermore, the paper does not explore cultural or contextual factors that may influence the adoption and effectiveness of these teaching patterns in different educational settings. Um, another suggestion that really uh, shows that AI is able to find missing links in the presentation uh, of the paper. Overall, addressing these gaps would enhance the comprehensiveness and applicability of the paper's findings, providing educators with more, more evidence-based guidance on selecting and implementing appropriate teaching patterns in technology curriculum. Now, this comment is constructive. It gets down to very specific uh, reasons why this paper uh, should not be published as a scientific uh, research. And I happen to, to agree with those, as well as uh, the, the reviewer we, we looked at earlier meet uh, a few of these points. So what about citations? Uh, are they well-formed uh, uh, and do they support the content? So the provided context does not, uh, the provided context does not contain any information about the citations in the paper or their accuracy and relevance. Therefore, I cannot evaluate the citations. And that is exactly what uh, we see in the paper, that citations are simply not there. Even though there are references at the bottom, and citations are, of course, within the text uh, that will uh, show connection to specific um, references. So overall, for this short article, um, this is a pretty um, good finding. So out of all the reviewers, uh, this seems to be a fairly uh, accurate and uh, critical evaluation that would lead to rejection of um, the paper. So we took a look at uh, Quiver, which is our uh, second brain. This is where you can upload your own documents and then chat with them. We also looked at uh, uh, Chaos, the um, uh, kind of innovative uh, journal system, and uh, we reviewed this uh, article, Teaching Patterns in Technological Curricula. Now I would say that the process here uh, is really uh, helping a reviewer, right? So you have a second brain, you have someone uh, that uh, is reading the article and is able to look at gaps, is able to comment on formatting, and from here I can make a decision on uh, which parts of the review to include. Um, I might even, uh, uh, I probably am not going to comment on this particular article, but if I was to post a review created with Quiver, I might include reference to it because it would be so beneficial for this author to use Quiver before they publish the article. Because if they see what the reviewers might see, they can go ahead and uh, shorten the uh, feed, uh, the, the input cycle or the feedback cycle and actually provide a higher quality article uh, because of uh, a tool like Quiver. Well, thank you very much and uh, encourage you to uh, review the app and take a look at the journal. Thank you.